Mount Everest is the tallest mountain on the planet, a miracle of nature that has fascinated people for millennia, capturing their imagination. For as long as it has existed, humans have sought to climb it, to reach the summit and conquer nature. For many people, it is a lifelong goal that they spend years training for. But even for seasoned mountain climbing veterans, Mount Everest can pose a serious challenge, and many do not survive the endeavor. Currently, it is estimated that there are around 200 corpses on Mount Everest. The severe, biting cold preserves them in place, like a snapshot in time. It is normal to encounter corpses of those that died decades ago, preserved as if they died yesterday. These bodies become landmarks on the trails up the mountain, guides for other climbers and Sherpas, but also tragic reminders that this is a hostile, alien environment. One mistake or accident could leave you dead and stranded miles up for eternity. The sad truth is, at 29,000 feet, or 8.8 kilometers, it is practically impossible to recover bodies or rescued the injured or dying. People have died trying to recover bodies in the past. It is simply too high, the air too thin. Even helicopters struggle with the altitude. So those that perish are left behind. Perhaps the most famous corpse on Mount Everest that was used as a landmark for years is Green Boots. Lying in a small cave on the northeast ridge route, he was given the nickname due to the color of his mountaineering boots. His identity has never been confirmed, but he is believed to be an Indian man called Su Wang Paljor. Paljor died during a storm in May 1996, which also claimed the lives of eight others. Despite the storm, Paljor and two of his colleagues of a six-man team decided to continue up the mountain. The three other members decided to turn back. It was the last time they ever saw them again. A Japanese team descending the mountain later passed three climbers, who may have been Paljor and his colleagues. The three that had decided to turn back also saw what they thought were the men's headlights trying to descend later that evening. In 2014, Green Boots was finally hidden from view by members of a Chinese expedition likely out of respect. One of the saddest tragedies on Mount Everest is the death of Frances Arsteniv, known as Sleeping Beauty by the climbers that passed by her corpse for years. She was given a nickname due to the peaceful, calm expression on her face. The position of her body also made it appear as if she were sleeping. On the 22nd of May, 1998, Frances had become the first American woman to reach the summit of Mount Everest without supplementary oxygen. But this achievement came at a price. As she was descending with her husband, Sergei, the two became separated. And Frances was discovered the next morning by two climbers, Ian Woodall and Kathy O'Dowd. She was still alive but dying of hypothermia. She couldn't move and her consciousness was fading. She whispered, don't leave me to O'Dowd. The two climbers spent the next hour by Frances's side until she eventually passed away. O'Dowd later wrote of the encounter. I had never encountered anything like this. I had passed bodies, I had had friends not come back, but I had never watched anyone die, nor had I had to decide to leave them. Sergei managed to reach his camp, but noticing his wife was missing, he went back to find her. He passed some Uzbek climbers who had attempted to help Francis, but had to abandon the effort due to running out of oxygen. Sergei never came back. He fell to his death trying to reach his wife. For years, Sleeping Beauty lay visible on the North Cal route. But in 2007, Ian Woodhall returned to Mount Everest and moved Francis' body somewhere less visible. He then covered her body in an American flag and left a note for my family. One of the more controversial deaths on Mount Everest is that of David Sharp. Frozen in a sitting position with his arms holding his legs, David died in the same cave as Green Boots. 
Although unconfirmed, it's believed that David reached the summit on May 14, 2006. However, on his descent, he became fatigued, likely due to lack of oxygen. He made his climb without bottled oxygen. He took shelter in the cave and sat down to rest, slowly dying. Dozens of climbers and expedition groups passed by David on the 14th and the 15th, but tragically most ignored him. It's possible they mistook him for green boots, or assumed he was fine and just resting. Mark Inglis and his expedition stopped to check on David, but controversially left him to continue up the mountain. Nine hours later they encountered David again, but at this point it was too late to help David, and he passed away. Inglis claimed he believed Sharp was beyond help, which is why he left him. He has been heavily criticised for doing this. Instead of trying to offer real, substantial help to save someone's life, he and his party cared more about reaching the summit. Eventually, David's body was also hidden from view. Hanalor Schmatz was used as a landmark for decades on the southern route up Mount Everest. She holds the unfortunate record of being the first woman and German citizen to die on the mountain. On October 2nd, 1979, Schmatz, along with her husband Gerard and several others, embarked on an expedition guided by Sherpas to reach the summit. They split into two climbing groups and, at first, things went okay. Despite the terrible conditions, both groups successfully reached the summit. Gerard, at 50 years old, became the oldest man to do so. But, like most people that perish on Everest, the problems began during the descent. Schmatt's group was hit by severe weather as a blizzard formed. Exhausted and disorientated, Schmatz and an American climber called Ray Jeanette stopped with the intention of camping the night, despite warnings from two Sherpas that were accompanying them. They were in the death zone, an area so dangerous that the chance of dying from oxygen deprivation or the cold is significant. Here Jeanette died of hypothermia. After Jeanette's death, Schmatz finally agreed to descend with the two Sherpas. But her body had already started to succumb to the harsh climate, and she collapsed from exhaustion. Resting in the snow against her backpack, her final words were, water, water, before she passed away. One of the Sherpas remained with her body for some time, which ultimately cost him his finger and some toes due to the frostbite. Due to her location and position, the German woman became infamous to those that traversed the southern route. In 1985, Arnie Nice Jr., a Norwegian mountaineer, described the following. I can't escape the sinister guard. Approximately 100 meters above Camp 4, she sits leaning against her pack, as if taking a short break, a woman with her eyes wide open and her hair waving in each gust of wind. Yet it feels as if she follows me with her eyes as I pass by. Her presence reminds me that we are here on the conditions of the mountain. An attempt to recover the body was attempted in 1984 by a police inspector and a Sherpa, but they both died in the process. The wind eventually pushed the body off the side of Kangsheng face sometime in the 1990s. Mount Everest has earned the moniker of the open graveyard waiting above, a stark reminder of the tragic sacrifices people have made in pursuit of its summit. George Malloroy, one of the most famous mountaineers in history, was once asked why he wanted to conquer Everest. He simply replied, because it's there. Malloroy, like those already mentioned, also died in his endeavour. People will always strive to conquer Everest, even if it means they will never return. <laughs>